Hi guys, welcome back to We Should Talk, a pop culture interview series from In The Know. I'm your host, Gibson Johns, and I know that we have not had an episode for a couple weeks, and uh, it's been a little bit intermittent this summer, but just working some stuff out behind the scenes, it's a little bit difficult booking and, and working around people's vacation schedules and things like that. Um, so thank you for being patient. I know I'll have a couple more updates for you in the coming weeks and months. Um, but this week we do have an episode. It's an interview with Aaron Lim, who hosts Ease the Rundown, which is their show that's native to Snapchat. So it's, it just lives there. It's, it airs several times a week. It's been airing for almost eight years. They just celebrated the 1,000th episode. Um, and for me, Erin is one of the best talents on E! right now. She's dynamic. She's fun. She's engaging. Uh, she's funny. And so I had her on to talk about the show's run, look back at some of the highlights, uh, talk about some of her uh, interactions with the Kardashians over the years, and we talked about the changing entertainment news landscape, uh, all that jazz. And I just love Erin. I think she's so great, and it was fantastic to get some time with her. So keep listening for my interview with Erin Lim. Check out Ease the Rundown on Snapchat, and please rate, review, and subscribe to We Should Talk on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, so we are here with Aaron Lim, host of Ease the Rundown, which just celebrated its 1,000th episode. Aaron, thanks for being here. I'm excited to chat with you. How are you? Great. I'm doing super well. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, 1,000 episodes. I can't believe this this lady is still on that stool doing this show. <laughs> I hope you treated yourself for 1,000. Like, did you, did you, how did you kind of commemorate that? Because that's, that's a huge milestone, 1,000 episodes. Like, that's kind of, that blows your mind a little bit. Yeah. What did I do? I'm, I feel like I'm always kind of treating myself here and there. Okay, good. So I don't know if I did anything like out of the ordinary, like, I don't know, all the time I'm finding an excuse to treat myself. So I was like, oh my God, a thousand episodes. Maybe I'll have, <laughs> you know, a margarita, one more margarita. Like last Friday, else. right? Exactly. <laughs> go and get the bag why not a thousand yeah. episodes <laughs> love it love it and there was this great video that kind of looked back on the first episode and kind of everything you guys have done along the way and yeah. it just it, it reminds you of sort of like the, the rundown is really special I think in the fact that it's like not formulaic because you you, you can do the in-studio stuff you can also be on the ground be on location you've done a bunch of different things with with different stars when you think about the evolution of the rundown what what kind of pops to into mind about like sort of sort of inflection points for you or or do you feel like it's you've just kind of remained steady with it this show has not remained steady we have gone through so many changes i mean when this show came out seven and a half years ago a thousand episodes ago there was no show like it there was no vertical show that ever existed so we literally were creating the rules as we were going, you know, everything that you see with vertical media these days, that is quite literally from us. Mm -hmm. So it is, you know, it's funny to see like how much it has changed. Like the pacing has changed. The amount of stories that we cover has changed. So everything is, uh, is, I don't know. When you look at that first episode, you're like, whoa, you are talking so slow. You are going way too <laughs> long into this one story. Like, please be more concise and conversational. Wrap it and up, now right. it's like we fit so much information into just a few minutes that you're like, oh, my God, what even what did I even just take? Like, I know so much, but like, oh, that was a trip we just went on. And is, so, and yeah, is, it, is, is that a reaction to like the general climate and what viewers want to respond to or like what? What explains that, the kind of, the the increase of the pace and, and things like that? I think, yeah, times have just changed so drastically. Every six months, I say, there is like a big shift in the way that we are consuming media sure. and the things that we are interested in and the attention span that we have. I think that as our attention span has just gotten shorter and shorter and the way that we consume media has just become so much more handheld, like all we can take is just a few minutes. Like we want things like literally at the snap of our fingers like we want that news instantly and we don't want to like read a long article we don't want a one minute and a half package about it like just give me the key factoids that'll get me through the day and will get me through the water cooler conversation yeah yeah tell tell me what i really need to know and then and then move on to the next thing for sure yeah 
when I when you, you mentioned seven and a half years ago, and it's like when when I think about Snapchat in those early days when the when the rundown was starting, you know, it was like it was like the days of King Kylie and and she was reigning supreme on Snapchat. And there was there were a lot of celebrities like using Snapchat in that in that sort of original way where posting on their Snapchat story. And then that the app itself has evolved so much over the years as well. And it's it still has this incredibly huge user base, really engaged, really young user base. How have I mean how have you guys reacted to sort of Snapchat itself changing and sort of how people think about about that? Because it's, it, it, you know, the, there, there's ups and downs with every app, I think. But you guys have, again, kind of chugged through all of those peaks and valleys. Yeah, I think we have always been able to adapt and we always are tapping into feedback in real time. Like, you know, you can check like what are people tapping through what are people skipping what is making people click you know what are the stories that they're interested into what has high engagement and what totally does not mm -hmm. so we're constantly looking at that data and then we're using it to cater to that audience and you know with things like twitter and dms and all of this all of these apps where you can have engagement with your fans like they let you know they'll tweet you or they will dm you yeah. like i didn't like that or this was wrong or i liked what you're wearing or you know can you cover more on this story so you know we, we really try and let the audience dictate where we go and you know everything down to the tiles that you see like the pictures that we use like oh are they going to respond well if we use this mm -hmm. photo or should we use this photo um so you know a lot of that stuff is down to a science. Yeah. And is that what keeps you going up, up through a thousand episodes? The fact that you do have to adapt constantly in, 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 is that, is that what keeps you excited about something like this? Like that goes on for so long? Yeah. I think honestly with everything it is adapt or die. <laughs> we cannot stay doing the same thing mm -hmm. for years. You just really have to figure out what is the audience wanting right, wanting right now? What are people's rhythms right now? And yeah, I think that's the only way you get through and have a successful show like this. Like, you know, when you look back, nothing is the same. Like I am the same, but I've also changed. And mostly the way that I talk and my point of view has remained the same. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like things just naturally change as time goes on. For sure. You, you mentioned sort of being able to see like directly what works, what doesn't. Do certain celebrities or, or stories work on Snapchat that don't work as well in the sort of general celebrity news landscape or vice versa? Are there certain like huge celebrities that people love to talk about everywhere else, but maybe on the rundown, like you guys don't find them perform very well? You would be surprised to see the things that work on our show that are just not on linear broadcast entertainment right. show. You know, like we definitely cater to a younger audience, younger demo. So we are talking about TikTokers mm -hmm. and YouTube stars. We are talking about like the David Dobricks of the world or the Logan Pauls. And, um, you know, of course, Kylie still reigns supreme course, with our yeah. audience, you know, Taylor Swift. And But it's funny, like even with Taylor Swift, it's like she can span like so many different audiences from like true millennials to then the Gen Zers and then whoever's behind them, like you know, she is someone who we will cover for the rest of our life. Sure. And then you have other stars, you know, like who um, broke up in the last seven years where we covered it as if it was a big story and then it just flopped. I want to say it was like when Brangelina came apart, it was really? like a huge breaking yeah, of news story. That was like, like world breaking. Yeah. Like the whole world crumbled and we did like a breaking news hit on it. And then our audience was like, yeah, we don't we don't care who <laughs> right exactly but but it's like but you're you're riding that wave with them so it's like you you're you can't you can't be like the the like the millennial who's like oh like these gen zers don't know this person like you yeah. just have to kind of be like all right they don't know this person yeah. let's move on you know and yeah and like you know my niece she's uh like 14 years old and she's like telling me all of the things about Olivia Rodrigo and I'm like yes tell me more like yeah. tell me all the nuances of her relationship status and like what are the things that I'm missing like I want them to also inform me into like you know if there's anything that I'm missing on these like TikTok deep dives like please let a girl know 100% so you obviously host the show and, and you're what you're very much involved in kind of I feel like every element of it can you explain sort of the different roles that you play on the rundown and and how you kind of help make this show what it is, because you are the show. 
Yeah. And then I also have like an amazing team, like my producers and my writers and my editors. Like we always say, and like the joke is that the editors are the real stars of the show because they could just like insert those comedic moments. So, you know, and our PAs, like I am just obsessed with our whole team. I think everyone is so talented. Of course, we want the show to be true to my voice and my opinion and my interests. So, you know, it's like we all like we have a team of people. We're all like scouring the Internet and, you know, going through the headlines and just finding the news stories that not everyone is talking about. It's like, wait, let's talk about um, that T-shirt that she rewore over and over again. Or like, you know, it's just like funny stories that are just kind of random that just speak to my own personality personality and randomness so yeah yeah, I'm involved in like you know picking the news stories or like even when it comes to writing the show it's like wait would I say that like let's kind of rewrite some of these things and then we you know we let the editors take it away Mm -hmm. and then our producers find those like funny thoughts and moments and that is also collaborative it's like wait let's use um this quote from this show in response to something that I said or to use as you know, like an um, exclamation. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we talk about, we talked about sort of the changes in Snapchat, the changes in the social media landscape, but the celebrity news landscape has also changed drastically over the past 10 years as well, just in terms of like, I don't know, like how I feel like there's they're sort of a, a more sympathetic kind of air around celebrity news. It's not as like t- about tearing people down or as salacious as it might've been back in like, the 2007 2008 years of the Britney heyday like it's it, a lot has changed and I'm curious what what you've seen through your own experience in terms of how that has changed in particular not in terms of social media but just in terms of okay how do we interact with these celebrities how do we talk about them do we want to be more sympathetic do we want to be more objective or what what kind of changes have you seen in, in that regard we definitely are more sympathetic, empathetic, and celebratory of celebrity news and pop culture and entertainment news. At least for me and my show, I never want to be bashing someone. I never want to really be calling anyone out unless that's absolutely necessary. Right. Like there are some things where it's like, okay, we draw the line Black and have and a strong point of view on this. Um, but other than that, like if it's something where maybe a celebrity is in the wrong and there are two strong opposing sides, I really just want to present the facts Mm. when talking about it. I don't want to like take a strong stance one way or the other, because at the end of the day, we really don't know what the truth is or where everything could land. Because by the time you see the news, it's like, oh, the story has already changed so much. So there are a lot of times where I'm like, okay, I need to be a journalist and I have to have journalistic integrity. Um, And my show is all about fun maybe sometimes poking fun. So I never want someone to feel horrible. I want if a celebrity who's watching my show, I want them to feel like, oh, like she's fun. She's playful. She gets it. And I never want them to be like, you know what? You're actually really mean and nasty. And I don't like you. Like, I yeah. I don't want that because these celebrities, I understand they are real people. I see them around. I might see, see them at a party or I might see them at my local coffee shop. And I never want to have weird interaction with them. So I think definitely the way that we report has changed specifically for my show. I always want it to be celebratory and I'm always looking at it through the lens of if I see this person, are they going to like give me a complete eye roll? Yeah, totally. And and I think that there's sort of a mis there's sort of a misconception I think that like I think some people think of celebrity news as just being sort of like super PR friendly and it can't be interesting if it's too sympathetic, but I think that the rundown is is a testament to the fact that you can still make a really interesting, fun, engaging show where you can learn yeah. things and not not be malicious or whatever. But I think yeah. that there's, I do think there's sort of like, there weirdly is like an appetite for that, but I'm glad that you aren't like <laughs> feeding into that, you know? Cause I feel like yeah. be, that's kind of easy to do these days because the people want, we're in this culture where people like to tear people down. But I'm, right. again, you guys are yeah. a testament to the fact that you don't have to be that way to, to be successful and interesting. Yeah, we definitely like to play. Sometimes we'll poke fun. Of course. Sometimes a celebrity is in on the joke too. And we're like, ooh, let's tap into that. But also a lot of celebrities have spoken out about how the media has ruined their life, how it has affected their mental health. And with mental health being so important to me and to my entire team, mm-hmm. we never want to add to someone's mental health struggles. And when people talk about their mental health journeys, especially celebrities, we champion that fully. Mm. That, that's that's really important and that's that's not done enough I don't think and 
you know, I, I think about Dumois, for example, and I think that that's had an effect on, not to call them out, but that, that, that account and that brand has sort of had an effect, I think, on the overall landscape a little bit. What do you make of that effect and sort of like putting things up that aren't fact checked or just kind of throwing things at the wall and seeing if they stick? Because um, I, I feel like I've noticed that kind of pick up steam in, in other sort of corners of of that world. Yeah, like I love Dumois and, you know, I've, I, we, a lot, a lot of times our show credits Dumois because even Kim Kardashian herself has said Dumois right. is Bible. And when right. someone like Kim Kardashian is saying that, you're like, oh, okay. okay. And I know that Dumois does their hardest to always post something that they know is 100% true. You know, there have been times where they have retracted a story or, you know, went back and said, this claim is actually false. So it's like, you do have to really keep up because if right. you just watch it on a Monday and, she, and they said one thing, and then you watch it on a Friday and they're like, oh, actually, totally. the thing that I said on Monday, then it's like, you, you're like, wait, what is actually the truth? So it's like, you really do have to keep up if you are trusting Dumal. Um, so yeah, it definitely has affected things because I think celebrities are kind of like, wait, anything I say and do will be out there. Like maybe I shouldn't be an asshole in private <laughs> because someone is going to send it to Dumois. You know, I do feel like a lot of celebrities feel like violated in a way, but it's and at the same time, it like comes with the territory. Like if yeah. you didn't have anything to hide or you like, if you were a good person, then you really wouldn't be worried what Dumois has to say. I think if you are, on, if you have some bad behavior and you have some skeletons that you are trying to keep track of, like, then yeah, you probably would be afraid of Dumois because they're mm. going to find them. Yep, exactly. <laughs> they, they will find them. Exactly. Yeah. Um, being at E, obviously over the years, you've gotten, if you bring up Kim, you've gotten a lot of great access to the Kardashian Jenners over the years. What's a memorable moment or two that stick out to you from interviewing them or, or, or working with them um, that, that you kind of cherish or, or that you think of? when I mentioned them. Yeah, it's like the Kardashians, like people love them or they hate them. But at the end of the day, if you have any affiliation with them, you are like, man, I got touched by the Kardashians. Right. <laughs> like I, I feel like I touched gold myself. <laughs> no, but they like as famous as they are, every interview I've had with them has been so pleasant. Mm. And I think a lot of people can say that and especially Kim like she really is a true professional and she knows that this is part of her job but I also think she's just a good person as well so she knows like you know when someone is taking their time out to talk to you interview you to promote whatever it is you're promoting like you might as well be kind to them and mm -hmm. she's always been kind when it comes to interviews I've had such a pleasant time with Courtney and like her entire camp and it's like leading up to interviewing them it's like a whole thing where you know there's a lot of people involved there's you know expectations there's PR people that you have to deal with like all of these things but then when it just comes to me and one of them just having a conversation it really does feel genuine it feels like we can you know it, the interview can go in any direction because they're not trying to like watch what they say so I've always had really awesome times talking to them and I can confirm they are real humans with real feelings <laughs> and real say, You said that you feel like you sort of like been touched by gold by sort of getting that, getting that endorsement because you're sort of, again, you're, you're, you're in there. What, what can you say for you is the biggest mix, misconception people have about them from based on your own interactions with them? That maybe they're just way too robotic or that they are not kind, not good right. people. And that always surprises me because it's like, you see the charitable things that they do. They, for the most part, keep it real. I don't know. I really don't understand when people hate because I'm like, what? I mean, what is it? They're that easy, it's, it's lazy. They're easy targets. Such, That's what it is. It's such an easy target. So yeah. I just feel like every time I've talked to any one of them, always been kind, always been professional. For the most part, always on time too. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's like, where you always hear about them is that they're always on time, the Kardashian girls. Yeah, yeah. and you know, I've, I've interviewed a lot of people where they want me to be there and talk to them, but, and they want me to promote whatever it is, yet they are not giving me anything. They're hard to talk to, they're hard to interview, they're very late. Right. It is like pulling teeth. 
And that's not a fun experience for me. Mm -hmm. So when you are a superstar like that and you are easy to talk to and you are on time and you are kind, that's a win all around. What do you do in moments like that when you're in an interview and the celebrity is just kind of stonewalling you, just wants to talk about the one the one project that they're there to promote and that's all they're going to talk about? What do you do? Like what, what goes through your mind? Do you have certain tactics that you fall back on? Um, I get more and more self-deprecating towards myself <laughs> and I get more goofy and I really just try to break them down. Like yeah. I, I get real weird. Like my motto <laughs> and MO going into these things is just to be weird. And then eventually they're like, you're strange. And I'm like, yeah, just like, yeah, like just, you know, break me down, break Aaron down. Like, let's just get funky, you know, like let's get out of your head, which is clearly like you were thinking too much about what you want to say. Like, let's just, I don't know. Let's just talk yeah. about feet pics and, and cheeseburger. <laughs> and sometimes I've the best moments come out of that, uh, come out of those yeah. kind of those last ditch efforts to get something, you know? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I, in some of your, in some of the episodes of the rundown, you know, there's these, there's these interviews where like you're on the red carpet somebody's walking up and like the celebrity is clearly so excited to see you and you're so excited to see them. You've, you've talked before, like it's, it's a clearly very genuine, just like interaction that you're having right off the bat. Um, who are some of those people that you feel like you have over the years, just really generated this amazing rapport with where you just feel really comfortable with one another. It's, it's a mutually beneficial, like you each get a good interview out of it. Who are some of those people that pop, pop into your head? Joey King. Mm. For sure. Um, Lucas Gage. Um, Megan Trainer, Haley Steinfeld. Um, Glenn Powell. Um, Dylan O'Brien. Billy Bobby on. Brown. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's like a lot of people who yeah. have just watched my show forever and whenever they see me they're like excited and I'm excited to see them and I know it's going to be like a really good time so yeah there have been a lot of like surprising fans too where I'm just like oh my god you know me you watch my show That's I love so it cool. I love that yeah. um right now Aaron obviously there's several strikes going on in Hollywood that are impacting who you can interview about what and what they can talk about and and all these different things how is how are how are the strikes impacting your job and and how are you kind of what kind of workarounds are you guys coming up with to fill some of the air that that might be left by there being less celebrities to 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 do do publicity for certain things well luckily our show has never relied on interviews premieres yeah. junkets none of that like our news cycle is continuously going even when the pandemic first happened everyone was locked up in their house we still were able to produce our show yeah. three times a week. Like we have not skipped a beat. We have not missed an episode. So even with the strike, you know, celebrities are still going out for coffee and they're yeah. still <laughs> relationshiping and they're still going to Taylor Swift. And, you know, everyone is still giving us news. Thank God. <laughs> so it really has not impacted our show specifically. I know a lot of other shows, there is that dead space because it's like, wait, we rely on an interview every single episode and we do not. So for us, whenever we get interviews and premieres, that's always just like an added bonus for us. Right. With this, it's kind of like, all right, business as usual. Like the new, the new cycle is still going on. Taylor Swift is still surprising us every show. And, um, you know, yeah. yeah. We, we just, Jacob Elori is still wearing fun purses, Merces. <laughs> you know, nothing's changed. The usual, the usual, right? Yeah. Exactly. Are you, are, we're, we're talking on the second day of uh, Taylor Swift's LA, LA stretch. Are you going to one of the concerts? I am going to the Saturday concert tomorrow and Hell rumor yeah. has it, there's going to be a big surprise. There are so many theories out there. I need to go home and make my beads. I need to get my outfit ready and prep. Like I'm excited. Amazing. Um, well, Aaron, you just celebrated 1,000. Are we going for 2,000? Are we going for 5,000? What does the future of the rundown look like? What else do you want to be want to do at E? What, what does the future look like for Aaron Lim? I'm going to be doing the rundown until I'm in a wheelchair, like until the gray the hair will become a wheelchair. Right, exactly. <laughs> Literally, like I will do this show for life. I love it so much. I love the people who work for this show. 
you know, E has been a part of my brand since birth. Like I am Aaron. My parents call me E girl. Like this was just like written for me. So I am a rundown girl for life. I am just so privileged that I get to do it. And who knows what the future holds, but hopefully we do have, you know, 20,000 more episodes. I love it. Well, Aaron, thank you so much for taking the time. Everyone check out the rundown on Snapchat and uh, have fun at Taylor Swift. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to We Should Talk. I hope you enjoyed the interview. You can find out more about In The Know at inthenow.com. You can follow me, Gibson John, at Gibsonoma on Twitter and Instagram. And you can listen to all of our interviews, past and future, by searching We Should Talk wherever you get your podcasts. Hope to see you next time.